Hey guys, and welcome back to another Simply Dark episode. Before I get started, I would just like to wish you guys a very happy new year. This is my first video of 2020 and I cannot tell you guys how excited I am to keep doing the Simply Dark series for you and I have so many interesting topics to talk about throughout this new year. So. If you've been enjoying the Simply Dark series so far, buckle up because I have many more to come. Now, today I am going to be covering a true crime case of a missing boy called Rui Pedro that happened many, many years ago back in Portugal. This is the most infamous missing child case in Portugal and it is still unsolved today. I decided to cover this case here on my channel because it is actually a case very, very close to my heart. I've been debating about doing this case or not for a really long time, but I think that videos like that really helps, you know, bring cases that nobody talks about anymore to light again and maybe by keeping the word out there this will help in some way. So this case happened more than 20 years ago and I cannot tell you how much I admire Rui Pedro parents for never giving up. Still this day they are still looking for their child, they are still talking on social media, they are still talking on TV they are still trying to do something. Now, like I said before, this case is really, really close to my heart, not only because I lived really, really close to the family when I was living back in Portugal, but I actually know Rui Pedro's um, grandma. So that just makes this case extra special to me. Now, let's get into it. Everything started on March 4, 1998 in Lozada, a small town in north of Portugal. At around 2 p.m. Rui Pedro grabbed his bike and went to his mom work right across the street from their home. He wanted to ask permission to go out with his friend Afonso Diaz which was 21 years old at the time. Apparently, Rui Pedro knew Afonso for a little over a year and they hung out together frequently, so his family knew Afonso as well. Which to me sounds a little bit sketchy, like why on earth would a 21 year old hang out that frequently with an 11 year old like there's a huge age gap there in fact several of Rui Pedro's friends also thought that it was kind of weird and they reported that Afonso was incredibly obsessed with Rui Pedro especially in the two weeks prior his disappearance and they also claimed that he knew a lot about Rui Pedro's life where he was, who was he with, and even what he had planned for the next day. Anyway, Rui Pedro's mom refused his request and told him to go play on the field behind her office instead. So behind her work there was a big field that it was actually like a horse tracking field and it was normal for Rui Pedro and his friends to play there so his mom just told him look you can't play with him you can't go anywhere with him just go and play in the field so I can keep an eye on you later that afternoon Rui Pedro was supposed to have a lesson with a tutor at around 5 p.m but he never showed up at around 6 p.m the tutor decides to call his mom and let her know that Rui Pedro is not there for his usual lesson Rui Pedro's mom found this extremely strange and knew immediately that something was wrong as he has never skipped a lesson before the police got then contacted word immediately spread across the neighborhood and searches to find the boy begun. During the search, a neighbor finds Rui Pedro's bike hidden in the bushes on the field behind his mom's work, exactly the place where his mom told him to ride his bike. But 
there was no sign of him at all. Since Rui Pedro's last words to his mom was to ask if he could go play with Afonso, everyone's attention turned on him. He was asked by the family if he had seen Rui Pedro, to which he very calmly replied he hadn't. However, later on, several friends recalled seeing Afonso talking to Rui Pedro at the field from inside a black Fiat Uno, exactly the place where Rui Pedro's bike was found earlier. Afonso didn't actually own a car, but on that day he had his brother's car with him so he could take it to the annual inspection, almost like, you know, the MOT that we do here on the UK. So he was in charge of taking his brother's car to the inspection, but it was later confirmed by the police that he never actually showed up for the appointment. The police then took him to be interrogated and when the interrogation was over, Rui Pedro's godfather confronted Afonso right there in the police station, offering him anything he wanted in exchange for an answer. And that is when Afonso says something that will for sure haunt this family forever. He said that if they wanted to find him, they should close all the borders of the country, as he was probably already far, far away, probably on his way to a foreign country. At this point, Rui Pedro's cousin, called André, gets in the middle of the conversation and starts talking about something that Afonso had said to both him and Rui Pedro. Afonso then gets really, really mad and tells André to shut up. However, Andre continues by saying that Afonso had invited both boys to go see some sex workers and to later on meet him at a place called Quinta Costilla. But Andre could not go because his mother also forbade him to do so. After this huge statement, police decides to talk with the sex worker and the three friends of Rui Pedro that saw him talking to Afonso on the Black Fiat. And this is what the police took from their claims. Rui Pedro, Andre and Afonso so were all together when Afonso offered to take them to sex workers. The boys accepted the invite and went to ask their mom's permission to go play with Afonso, which both said no. Unfortunately, Rui Pedro did not listen to his mom and at 3 p.m. he was waiting for Afonso at the field. Afonso then arrives in his brother's Fiat Uno. Rui Pedro leaves his bike and gets gets into the car with Afonso. They stop on the highway 106 to Lustosa to talk to Alcina Diaz, to whom Afonso paid 10 euros to have sex with Rui Pedro. The child leaves the car and comes to her, but then starts crying. She took him to the middle of the woods and asked him what was going on, why was he crying, which Rui Pedro replies he didn't want to be there. He said that Afonso made him come and that his mom didn't know where he was. Seeing the boy like this, Alcina Diaz decided to wait 15 minutes for him to calm down and then comes back having had no sexual contact with him at all. Rui Pedro gets inside Afonso's car and they both drive off in direction to a brothel 500 meters from there. At 6.45 p.m. Afonso arrives to his girlfriend's home in Friamund alone. Now from everything I read and from what Rui Pedro's godfather said, and I want to make clear here that a lot of what I'm saying today is based on Rui Pedro's godfather's statements, because he did like a mini documentary for a Portuguese show where it talks about everything. It was very, very close to Rui Pedro, so it tells 
everything about the story which if I can find I will leave it in the description box below for you to watch so a lot of my research was based on his um, report of the situation and he said that he was really really disappointed at the Portuguese police he said they, they did not do a good job at all they did not only investigate this um, missing case properly they also dismissed a lot of the reports that people were giving to them without apparent reason so all the reports from Rui Pedro's friends and the sex worker were dismissed they didn't count for anything which it blows my mind every time I think about it because they were the only witnesses how can you dismiss the only witnesses in the case? But the thing is, these wasn't the only things that they dismissed in this case. There were a lot of other possible leads that they could follow and didn't. And I have a few examples for you. For example, there was a specific phone call where a child with a voice very, very similar to Rui Pedro's called his mom. And you could hear this child calling for his mom non-stop non-stop like a desperate calling only to have the phone taken away from him and the call disconnected by someone else and police never tracked down this call like how insane is that i can't even imagine what his mom was feeling like listening to someone who who really really sounds like your child calling for you and not being able to help and find him I think it must be one of the most horrendous things you can go through in life it's something like this I, I can't even imagine and then there was also a report from a journalist called Nuno Rogério that while in Disneyland on holiday with his family he took a picture of his family on a ride I think it was the Pinocchio ride and on that photo behind his family you can see a boy that looks exactly like Rui Pedros and this boy is with a man all in red that was never identified and it was never identified because the police never took this picture serious although his mom says that she's 100% sure that is Rui Pedro obviously these pictures were taken by the police but nothing came out of it till this day these pictures are just a suspicion and now the craziest thing that happened to me that police didn't seem to care was that in September of that same year British police smashed the Wonderland Club I don't know if you remember about it but Wonderland Club was a huge huge international online pedophile ring which functioned almost like a database of pictures and videos horrendous stuff and this ring operated for about four years and then thank god they got caught and among these pictures they found i think a couple of them of Rui Pedro these pictures of him were shown to the portuguese police uh, they were shown to the family as well the family have 100 percent sure that it is him in these pictures we also got a confirmation from British police and from the Interpol that Rui Pedro was in fact the boy in the pictures but the Portuguese police never accepted it as evidence like how insane is that you have Interpol saying to you this is Rui Pedro we believe this is Rui Pedro and the Portuguese police is just like, nah, I don't think so. So although these pictures are the only physical evidence of the whereabouts of Rui Pedro, for some strange unknown reason, the Portuguese police dismissed this piece of evidence and didn't look through it 
as it should. Now, it wasn't until 2011 that the Portuguese police builds a case against Afonso Dias and takes the testimonies from Alcina, the sex worker, and from Rui Pedro's friends as credible witnesses. Maria de Fatima, who worked at a fire station nearby, was also a witness on this case and she states that she saw Rui Pedro talking to a man inside a black car at around 2 p.m. Maria also reveals that on this day, Afonso visited her at the fire station after their encounter in the police station and that he seemed really really worried asking her if she knew who he was and if she knew what his car looked like does it sound sketchy to you it sure sounds sketchy to me also afonso diaz alibi wasn't a credible one at all. He claims that Rui Pedro did not get inside his car, even though the three friends saw him going inside the car, and that he only drove to the nearby city called Pasto de Ferreira and sat down on his car in front of a pharmacy store until he decided to go for a walk in the city since he liked it so much. And after that, he just drove to his girlfriend's place. Now, after the trial, Afonso Diaz was sentenced to prison for three years three years. But the truth about what happened to Rui Pedro was never told, as Afonso maintained his innocence throughout the years. Afonso is now out of jail, obviously, it's been many, many years. He's living a normal life. He actually lives close to my parents, which is insane to me and it, it makes me not at peace because I do not believe in him at all. I think he sounds really, really sketchy. I think that he has something to do with it. I think he probably sold Rui Pedro to someone and nobody can take that off my mind and I just hope I don't cross with him on the street because I would feel very very unsafe and yeah he's living a normal life and yet Rui Pedro's family are still looking for answers and trying to figure out what happened to their beloved son. I have to say this case still gives me nightmares still this day. I have two little boys and I cannot imagine being in a position like this. But what do you guys think? What do you guys think about this whole situation? Do you believe that Afonso is innocent? Do you think three years in prison was enough? Is it Rui Pedro still out there somewhere? Let me know in the comments below what you guys think about all this. I know that this case is now closed by the authorities. They are not looking for Rui Pedro anymore but that doesn't mean anything that doesn't mean that we can't still find him so if you know anything that you think it might be helpful please don't hesitate in contact the police that's it for me today guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you in my next episode